Welcome everyone to Lillian's Vegan World, Aloha. Uh, today I'm coming to you from gorgeous, sunny Honolulu, and I'm here to introduce one of my fellow Aussies from down under. Uh, please welcome Natasha Conyu to the show. G'day, Natasha. Hi, Lillian. How are you? <laughs> Good. I haven't I haven't used that expression in a long time, but I felt it very appropriate this morning. <laughs> it's nice to hear. <laughs> I know. Um, welcome to the show, Tash. So awesome to have you on. Oh, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> um, I do want to introduce you to the viewers. You are a meditation and yoga teacher. And you've recently moved to to gorgeous Hawaii, uh, the Oahu part of Hawaii. So welcome to the show and welcome to Hawaii. How's it all going? The big move and settling oh, in. Oh no, um, it's been uh, really interesting that I moved here in January um, and really just had enough time to uh, move into a place and then found uh, myself in a new and exciting world where things are shut down and everything's changing. Uh, so it's definitely been a, an interesting move. <laughs> well, I can, yes, to say the least, I can imagine that with what you do with your meditation classes and yoga and stuff, I can imagine that this has been a very um, interesting time in that you've been able to get creative and really pull some people and classes together to, to get through this, you know, very difficult time. So I'm looking forward to hearing all about it. First of all, Natasha, tell us about what it is that you do in your classes. You do a particular type of meditation. Uh, yes, that's right. So at the moment and since uh, we've been in the pandemic, I've predominantly been teaching um, a meditation technique called iRest, uh, which is a, it's a modern form of um, a, a practice called yoga nidra. Um, and it's a, it's a self-inquiry practice which can really be used to bring about um, some positive changes in your life um, and it helps you really get in touch with what's going on um, with yourself. Mm. Well, I, I was uh, very, very lucky and fortunate, fortunate enough to not only meet you but to also, you know, participate in these classes and... I know I've told you several times, but honestly, they've they've really helped me personally. You can you can live in gorgeous Hawaii, but still find negativity, you know, if that's if that's where you're headed. So what you do in your classes, it's it's quite it's uplifting, but it, it does make you stop and think and really um, to quote what you said, find the joy in every moment in life. Mm. And it, you know, it does make you more aware of that and how you can, you know, find happiness and, and, and find a way to get through this. So, Tash, tell us, how do we focus on the good aspects of life during uh, times like this? Well, we're faced with a lot of challenges in, in times like this. Um, uh, being forced to not be as social as we have in the past or not have as much contact with people and especially even just walking around with masks on all the time it can really change the way that you perceive the outside world because you're not receiving um, you know a lot of sensory input that you might be receiving from other people I mean just with the face mask on you can't see the beautiful smile that most people uh, are walking around in their faces on like, off, like with their faces normally um, and if you are not in these regular patterns of having contact with people, it can be quite easy to, um, to lose that connection. Uh, so we've got all these wonderful platforms like electronic platforms like Zoom, which is what I've been teaching on, which give us that opportunity to, to be reconnected. Um, but it's also about how you actually use them because you've always got a choice and say, no, I don't want to do that. And you can be a little hermit and, and sit at home and have a pity party and, and <laughs> about what, what is wrong with everything in your life. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's nice to stop and reflect and say, is that actually really helping me or not? Um, that's where meditation practices can really come into being because they, uh, and it's particularly with IRIS, that it's designed so that um, you look at more of the broader spectrum of things. It recognises that our, you know, our reality is made up of, um, of duality. We, we only know joy and happiness because there's some sort of sadness or, or some sort of suffering in the world. Um, and, you know, it, 
by by reconnecting in with both of them, you you increase your perspective perspective on what's what's really going on around you. Um, so that's the the meditation practice, I think, and that's where it has the the best benefits. But um, it also teaches us like some interesting little bits that we can take away into our everyday lives. So we can um, learn about a concept that we use in this practice called inner resource, which is about our own personal sense of safety and security. And uh, when you know your whole entire world around you is changing because of dramatic, you know, social upheaval or, you know, major changes in your life. Um, you know, you need to um, be able to tap back into having that sense of security. So, you know, that that in itself is, um, is a practice that it can just be conducted at a moment's notice just by simply taking a few moments, maybe closing down your eyes, concentrating inwards, taking a few deep breaths, and then just concentrating on what it is to be, you know, safe and secure just in this moment. Um, Tash, as you're talking, I find myself quite um, hypnotised by the, by your voice. <laughs> I've mentioned this to you before, and and what you do is so awesome. I I do hope that anyone out there who's watching the show does, you know, consider getting in touch with you because these classes really really do help I must say they have helped me tremendously but what you said now it's so it's so true isn't it you can do this any time of the day anywhere mm. that's one of the beauties of meditating isn't it and mm. still there are so many people that have never ever tried it yes that's right mm. so you know although my show is is it's about you know the vegan lifestyle and plant-based diet there's so much more to to a healthy, you know, well-rounded lifestyle, isn't there? And definitely your well-being, you know, your mind, your well-being is just so, so important. So I think if, uh, if anyone is feeling a little bit sort of down and out, there, is, there, there are lots of things you can do to, you know, get out of that funk or out of that little, you know, little hole that you're digging yourself into. Tash, I want to show the first slide that you've prepped for us. Um, if Melissa can pull that up about core concepts. This mm. is, I find, very, very interesting. So if you don't mind, can you just go through it a little bit with us? Oh, no, certainly. So um, this, this iris meditation that I've been teaching, um, it is uh, based upon this uh, yogic practice called Yoga Nidra, um, but it's a, it's a modern day adaptation adaptation so um, there's no religious connotations to it you you know you don't have to be a Hindu or you know you don't have to om and levitate or, or whatever <laughs> or whatever you think yoga might be to actually form um, you know this practice uh, but what it is is this real sense of self-inquiry into, into who I am as a being and uh, in in the the yogic philosophy um, we have this belief that there's there's all these different layers to our being um, you know, we have a body, but we're not just our body. Um, we have our energetic body, which we feel through our breath, but we're not just our breath. We have our mind and they have our thoughts, um, but we're not just our mind and our thoughts. We have our beliefs and all those things that come from our self-conscious, but we're not all of those. And so what this practice actually does is, is tries to take us through each of all of each of the different aspects of our being so that we can try and reconnect with our core, with what, what it truly is in our essence. Um, the process of actually doing so just, uh, it's almost like magic, you know, it, it, it makes things change because you, you open up your, your sense of perception to what's going on around you. Um, you generally start to have better uh, relationships um, it helps just go through, allow like even your thought processes to finish their natural cycles so that, you know, at the end of night, at the end of the day, you might feel um, like it's easier to go into sleep. And so that's why people see so many different um, benefits from the practice and what, whatever they're really trying to, to get out of the practice, you, you go into it with an intention, um, which helps to solidify why you're actually doing it and help bring about the, um, the positive aspects that most people are searching for. That is so interesting. Um, this IRS meditation I had never heard of until I met you. And I've been telling friends about it because I think this is 
I think this could really hit off like a lot of people would be would would benefit from getting to know more about this and it's it, going back to what you said just now about how you know it makes you sort of reach in within yourself and find that essence of who you really are I think that's where your meditation and my lifestyle on a plant-based diet really connect and vibe very well because I I'm of the uh, belief that I don't think any of us intentionally want to harm animals, for example, if we're talking about the vegan lifestyle. Somehow it's gotten to the point where, you know, we kind of think or assume that we have to, you know, eat certain things to, to live a healthy lifestyle. But deep down inside, I think, I think that's what's interesting to me about meditation is that you start asking yourself more and more questions about who you really are what you really want, what is really happening around you without, you know, without any, any interference from anyone else or the outer, the outer world. Because when you're meditating, you're really working just with yourself, aren't you? And yeah. the energy obviously around you is very important. But, um, yeah, yeah I love what you... Mm. There's a lot of similarities there. So uh, just as we, we eat food and we digest it, we assimilate it into our body. You know, we need to do the same thing with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they're all part of our being, you know, the, the food that we eat Absolutely. nourishes our, our body, the, the thoughts that we bring into our mind and that we, we cultivate um, and the relationships that we cultivate, they, they feed our lives. So mm -hmm. they're very much related. Absolutely. Here's just a quick question. Why is it that we kind of all know what we're supposed to do to make ourselves feel better? We all know that we should eat, you know, healthy we should exercise we should I don't know drink less you know meditate more uh, think more positively what what is it Tash that we're doing wrong that that gets us into that funk where it, it doesn't seem to work <laughs> oh uh, you said you said a word that I always put I always point out to people in my classes when I start to talk about thoughts and beliefs is like uh, the should what should we be doing um, I always find it interesting uh, when I hear myself saying that and when other people um, say that too because uh, should indicates that there's some sort of resistance to what we actually want. And, um, you know, that, that should say, it says to us that there's some sort of conflict going on with what we're actually experiencing and what uh, we would like to be experiencing or what we're resisting in our lives and the meditation practice is actually about how can we just allow things to be as they are, to accept things as they are. And so slowly over time, maybe the shoulds die down because we're becoming more accepting of who we are and, and where we are and then change just naturally happens. Mm, that's, such a, that's such a good way of putting it and you make it sound so easy. Uh, it's but, not but the thing, yeah, <laughs> the thing is it's, it's not that easy but I... I kind of think it can be. So, mm. Tash, we're going to get back to you after this quick break and talk more about, you know, what we can do to focus on on finding a better way to move ahead in the COVID times and ahead in gen, uh, in life in general. So, stay tuned, everyone. We will be back after this short break. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on Think Tech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. <music>
Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm here with Tash, sorry, Natasha Konyu. <laughs> I'm used to referring to you as Tash, but uh, Tash Konyu, who is a meditation and yoga teacher here on Oahu in gorgeous Hawaii. Welcome back to the show again, Tash. Thanks, Lillian. <laughs> Lovely to have you on. Um, so we're talking eye rest meditation, you know, just ways in general of how you can um, just be happier, healthier, more mindful of yourself, who you are, what your beliefs are, and uh, you're here to help us do all of that. Tash, you did uh, send us in another slide that I do want to show. First of all, just you know, so that people know how they can get in contact with you. So if you uh, tell us a little bit about what what we can do to to get in touch with you, that would be awesome. Oh, no, that's fine. Um, so at the moment, um, I am only uh, teaching a, a limited number of classes on Zoom, uh, but I do offer a free uh, IRS meditation class every week, which is on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Um, for anyone who would like to try it out, they're more than welcome to uh, go through the link and, um, and, and, and sign up to the class. Um, exactly, or- and, th- and you can be in- from anywhere in the world now that we're doing all of this online so not only for people in Honolulu anyone yeah anyone who's out there can do this with us a lot of people uh, there's people in that class that, that, that are actually uh calling in from Australia and even from uh the mainland US wonderful so do get in touch uh anyone out there watching and give it a try I mean this, this for me this has opened up a whole new world and I think at my age, at my stage in my life, it's exactly what I need. You yeah. know, you think there there are times I think when you get when you get to your you know middle aged um, chapter in your life, and you kind of think, well, I know what I want now. I know who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, you become more set in your ways. But in fact, I find that for me, maybe I've become a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more open to ways that I can actually improve a lot of things, including especially my well-being. So Tash, tell us tell us about the um, what you think about the, the face mask era that we're in. Because oh. as you mentioned before, this has changed a lot of a lot of how we interact just as people and it's very unnatural for us, isn't it, given that you know, our face and our expressions provide so much information when you're interacting with another person. So I don't know, what's your insight into all of this? Well, you're exactly right. The the way that we communicate is not just our words. And um, with the pandemic going on, everyone's being told, you you know, social distance, don't Mm -hmm. hug, you know, shuckers, not shakes. You see this everywhere. And uh, that, that's a dramatic change in the way uh, people are used to interacting. Um, and once you create that distance, you then start to rely on other, you know, more subtle aspects of, of the way that you communicate, which is, is your facial expressions, which are half being covered up most of the time. Um, so it can be very easy to fall into a trap of like feeling like you are, you're, there's a boundary between you and everyone else in the world. Uh, or, you know, you, you, if you're, have a bit of a negative mindset, you're having a bit of a bad day, it, you might start to project that out and just assume that everyone is, is doing exactly the same thing. So it can be really hard to, to see what's going on and the good in, in, in everyone else with these masks. Um, so what's a really good practice to do is a few times a day when you go out, make the personal connection with someone who's wearing a mask. Uh, because for us to actually have a, a connection with someone, um, it's not as simple as just saying, hi, how are you, as you're walking past and, uh, you know, you would have done this. You you say, hi, how are you, and the other person says something that doesn't even respond to that question that you answered or it's an automatic thing that they say. Um, but you can make a connection by simply pausing for two seconds. Make eye contact with the person so that you can feel the personal resident, like resonance that you are there with, with another human being and like really genuinely saying from your heart, how are you today? And pausing just for the response. Um, it doesn't sound like much and realistically it might only add an extra, you know, 
20 or 30 seconds into your day, you know, because you say, hi, how are you? And maybe you ask them something, you can say, oh, how do you feel about the masks? Because everyone will have their own opinion about it. <laughs> uh, you know, or you could even be a little bit cheeky, like uh, someone suggested to me one day, which was if you meet someone, you're like, hi, how are you? And then just quickly pull it off and throw them a, a big smile. <laughs> You know, so think about it a little bit creatively going, we've got a barrier here, but, you know, there's plenty of ways that we could think about creatively how we can overcome those. And it's just about taking that extra few seconds to create a moment of connection with someone when you, when you interact with them. That is so well said and such good, good advice. It's funny, you know, because you, you, can, you can have someone say something to you so randomly that can really change your day. You know, you could wake up on the wrong side of the bed and someone will walk past and say, nice T-shirt or something. And it, it really it immediately uplifts you, makes you feel better. And when you think about it, it costs nothing to do that. Yeah. To interact with someone, not in a creepy way. Like, <laughs> we, we do have to be careful now. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's not but that's, behind you want to see what's behind my face mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we want to do this so that um, no one gets into trouble. <laughs> but, it, but it is so true. And I think, uh, I think it, life in general, what you're saying is um, it only takes a few minutes to make a huge change in other people's lives and your own. Because when you see that you've said something which, it, which to you might not be such a big deal could actually be, you know, a huge, a huge deal to someone else. And if you see how happy that you've made them, it actually does make you feel really good as well. So win-win situation. I love yeah. it. I'm going to, I'm going to practice that today. I'm, I'm going to do say something to someone randomly today and uh, enjoy it thoroughly. <laughs> And it's, it's, that's the wonderful thing because, you know, you can already, just talking about it, we can understand what that connection is. And when you just do that, um, you know, maybe two, three, four, five times a day, it creates a real difference in your mindset because you're suddenly seeing more positive things in the mm. world. That changes the way uh, you look at everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. Maybe, you know, we're stuck with this situation. This is where we are at. So whether we, we can choose to complain about it all the time, every time we have to put the mask on, or we can, you know, completely turn it around and just make it, make it a fun thing to do, how, you know, how we can go ahead wearing these masks but still, still be ourselves at the same time. And I think that's what we need to be able to do, as you said, find a way to get, get rid of that barrier that seems to be yeah. blocking us between you know some normal interaction with other people mm. um natasha what do you think about this phrase that i hear often in hawaii called is it um island fever they refer to it as you know stuck on an island all the time not being able to <sighs> to get off the island or or wanting i should say to get to you know get off the island go on a trip somewhere else so my question to you is, does living in a place like, let's, let's be realistic, Hawaii is one of the most loved islands in the world. We're so lucky to be living here. Would you say that it's, uh, it's helped us in a way to get through the, the COVID-19 times or it, does it have, does the warm weather, the sunny weather, the opportunity to go out into nature, you know, in warm weather, does it, do you think it affects us in any way? Um, being in nature, I think, is yeah, it's fundamental to helping us reconnect. We can get um, so stuck in uh, technology and behind computer screens and in front of TVs and, and uh, everything all the time that we sort of lose contact with everything that's going on. Um, so getting back to nature is just a fantastic way and, and there is so much beautiful nature here. Um, I mean, I may, may be slightly biased uh, or have a, a slightly different perspective because I've only been on the island for a short period of time. Um, so everything was new to me, but I have been, I felt like quite blessed because despite um, everything closing down, the ocean's still open, the outdoors is still open, 
and there's so much that you can go and do. Um, so I've, uh, since I've been here, I, I feel like I haven't even really missed out on much. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I, I haven't been out to bars or restaurants or, um, you know, some of the, the big tourist attractions and the like, but I've, I've been to all these wonderful hikes. Um, I, I've explored different parts of the island. I've uh, been swimming with the turtles so many times. I keep being told by my friends they just don't want to hear about that on Facebook anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I know that uh, for, for people maybe living in cities, that's, that's more of a challenge uh, or in places where they haven't had as much freedom to be able to get out, out outdoors. Um, so then they have to become a little bit more creative. But it really becomes um, about paying attention to what... Uh, like, or, or trying to bring about, like, you know, a sense of cre like creativity to what you're actually doing. Um, you can go, I want to spend some time in nature, but go, oh, okay, well, where haven't I might have been? Like, where haven't I been? Or um, I have a hike that's close to where I live. Um, so I do that every week, but I never get sick of that. Every time I'm there, I look for a new plant or I look for a new side trail that comes off of it. And I, I consider it just like a little bit of a, an adventure that I can go out and have every day. Um, so... It, it, it's all about the way that you look at what you're actually doing to determine how much joy that you get out of it. If you're willing to see the joy and experience fully the joy every single time you, you go and do something, you will feel a lot more, you receive a lot more benefits from it, basically. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. This is a nice segue, this conversation, into the next slide, uh, Natasha, that I wanted to, to show of you. Look at this gorgeous paradise that we live in. I know, up in the <laughs> isn't it beautiful? I have a friend of mine who, uh, who shot that photo. Um, yeah, how stunning is the the environment? Wow, it is it it is a gorgeous shot. No no doubt about it. So this is this is where you and I get to live. It's stunning. You look amazing in that photo. There's another a, a few more about a few more that you sent us. Where's this one taken, Tash? Um, that's actually Makapu Point. So um, I, I do like getting out hiking and trying different things. So you can go up the road or if uh, you're a bit of a hiker, there is uh, another little trail which is close to scrambling up the rocks um, around some bunkers, um, which is where a friend and I went out to go and explore a few weeks ago to, you know, do the same thing that we've done before but just do it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And one more slide we've got. There we go. <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh, Where, mm -hmm. uh, uh, another hike over on Windward Side, um, the Crouching Lion. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, Tash. And and what great advice. I, I couldn't agree more. Like get out in nature. Whether it's cold or hot, it doesn't really matter. You know, if you're in a cold place, rug up and get out and get that energy that Mother Nature gives to us all for free. Mm, exactly. <laughs> And if you're if you're in Hawaii, you know, there's so many opportunities. I recently, thanks to you, have learned or am learning how to paddleboard. Mm -hmm. Something I would never have done uh, pre-COVID times because I would just normally say, let's go out for something to eat and drink. Yeah. So what you said is true. You know, now we're being we're we're given the opportunity to to do things differently. And I hope that we do. Um, find a way so that we we move ahead in these times in a healthier manner and a happier because at the, at the end of the day it's all about you know being happy that's what we're put, put here for I think <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Tash thank you so much for coming on it's been awesome talking to you I do hope that anyone watching gets in contact with you oh, stay I safe and healthy Oh, sorry, just one quick one. I did forget to say there was a link before www.irest.org. Um, that's actually got some free meditations if anyone wants to try them out that came to mind. Fantastic. Just... Fantastic, yes, definitely. We'll uh, make sure that we'll put that in the link on the show if, for anyone who does want to watch it back. So get in touch with Natasha Conyu. Thanks so much, Tash. Have an awesome day. And to everyone else out there, uh, I wish you all a wonderful Day, take care. It's a state holiday today. So um, get out, get some fresh air and enjoy life. See you next time on Lillian's Vegan World. Mahalo. Mm -hmm.